bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of Berkshire Beyond Buffett, The Enduring Value of Values by Lawrence A. Cunningham. Berkshire Hathaway, the $300 billion conglomerate that Warren Buffett built, is among the world's largest and most famous corporations. Yet for all its power and celebrity, few people understand Berkshire and assume it cannot survive without Buffett. This book proves them wrong. In a comprehensive portrait of the corporate culture that unites Berkshire's subsidiaries, Lawrence A. Cunningham unearths the traits that ensure the conglomerate's continued prosperity. Riveting stories of each subsidiary's origins, triumphs, and journey to Berkshire's reveal how managers generate economic value from intangibles like thrift, integrity, entrepreneurship, autonomy, and a sense of permanence. Rich with lessons for those wishing to profit from Berkshire model, this engaging book is a valuable read for entrepreneurs, business owners, managers, family business members, and investors, and it is an important resource for scholars of corporate stewardship. General readers will enjoy learning how an iconoclastic businessman transformed a struggling textile company into a corporate legacy. In this book summary, you'll also learn how flipping burgers can actually lead to living your ultimate dream why junior managers should make more decisions than senior managers, and who's next in line when Berkshire founder Warren Buffett is gone. Summary part one, while Berkshire subsidiaries are diverse, they all share common core values. Starting from humble roots in 1965, Berkshire Hathaway has grown to become one of the world's largest corporations. This company's iconic leader, Warren Buffett, rocketed to fame in the 1990s as his savvy stock picking gained him shares in top companies such as American Express, Coca-Cola, and the Washington Post Company. As a corporation, Berkshire Hathaway's holdings are vast and diverse, and its influence extends over a wide array of commercial, financial, and manufacturing interests. Some of the companies it owns include GE Ico, the second most popular car insurer, in the United States. Burlington Northern Santa Fe, one of the North America's major transcontinental railroads, and the Mid-American Energy, a global energy supplier. And it's not just through Berkshire Hathaway's broad engagement in many different businesses that it demonstrates its ability to diversify. The company's subsidiaries differ widely in almost every measurable category, such as acquisition price, company size, and number of employees. With such a variety of companies under one roof, a degree of homogeneity might be expected. Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries do indeed share its own unique corporate culture, built on core values that serve to bring unity to such a wide-ranging portfolio. One of the company's core values is eternality. Long-term partnerships are highly valued at Berkshire Hathaway. The firm presents itself to subsidiaries, including many family businesses, as a place where they can find a permanent home. In this way, unifying traits and commonalities are found in bonds of trust rather than in simple financial metrics. These traits, when taken together, create the Berkshire Hathaway culture. Summary part two, being budget conscious and keeping promises are the heart of Berkshire Hathaway approach. Berkshire Hathaway's culture is made up of core values, which is spelled out by the individual letters in Berkshire that is For every letter, there's a corresponding value. Let's explore the acronym first two letters to learn the firm's two most important values. The B stands for one of Berkshire Hathaway's most essential principles, budget consciousness. Consider how the company's stake in GEI Co, a car insurer, supports its budget conscious focus. GEI Co practices budget consciousness through serious frugality and extraordinary operating efficiency. The company's goal to keep cost at an absolute minimum isn't merely to increase profits. However, GEI Co. is in fact passed along its most of its savings to customers as lower premiums. This policy in turn attracts more customers and results in greater total premium volume for the company. The E refers to earnestness. The value of keeping promises, earnestness is a characteristic which broadly applies to all Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries particularly its insurance companies. The business philosophy of Berkshire Hathaway subsidiary National Indemnity Company, NICO, is based on earnestness at its most effective. 
its philosophy stresses that while an insurance policy is merely a promise, NICO aims to offer promises of the highest quality. How does a company do this? NICO writes policies that other insurers won't or can't because such policies involve unusual risks for the proportional premiums. In the months after 9-11 terrorist attacks in the United States, NICO wrote large-scale terrorism policies including a $1 billion policy for several international airlines and a half a billion dollar policy for an overseas oil platform. NICO could write such policies and stick to its earnestness principle as it has made Berkshire Hathaway's core values its own. Summary Part 3 A strong reputation and solid family ties have served Berkshire Hathaway well. A good reputation goes a long way. A good reputation goes a long way. And not just in terms of maintaining a friendship. Even a company's finances can benefit from a company's good rep in an industry. Importantly, investing in the value of reputation, the R in Berkshire has paid off for Berkshire Hathaway companies. Successful furniture retailer and Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries, Jordan's Furniture earns some $950 of revenue per square foot annually, a number nearly six times the industry average. The company's secret? Jordan's Furniture has sold a reputation based on its unique customer service. Its approach goes beyond offering a wide selection of furniture at good prices with prompt delivery to orchestrating a special experience that the company calls shopper tainment. At one of Jordan's stores, for instance, customers can take a seat in a small theater or watch a flight simulation. At another, customer services can stroll along a model of Bourbon Street in New Orleans and even tour a riverboat. These entertaining in-store concepts attract tons of interested customers and in turn generate higher sales. Truly, Jordan's investment in the value of reputation has paid off. The K in Berkshire, Kingship, has proven valuable for Berkshire subsidiaries. In striving to solidify Kingship bonds, Berkshire Hathaway aims to create wealth that lasts generations in the same way that a tight-knit family values identity and legacy. Berkshire Hathaway does business for the long term. This makes family businesses particularly attractive for it, as they are often characterized by powerful bonds such as fairness, mutual respect, and trust. And in business, this pays off. In 1995, Berkshire Hathaway was able to acquire family business RC Willie Home Furnishings for $25 million less than a rival bid. R.C. Willie knew that Berkshire Hathaway appreciated the strengths of family businesses and saw value in its financial position and the policy of permanent relationships. Thus, the benefits of its own corporate culture allowed Berkshire Hathaway to seal a deal while also saving money. Summary Part 4. Self-starters and entrepreneurial thinkers thrive under Berkshire's hands-off management policy. As an entrepreneur in the field of acquisitions, Warren Buffett showed how a small business could transform into a huge corporation. It's no surprise that this entrepreneurial spirit still fuels Berkshire Hathaway's company culture. Berkshire managers must be self-starters, the S in Berkshire. Self-starters are entrepreneurs who have a vision and can run a business on their own. In fact, among Berkshire's entrepreneurs are several recipients of the Horatio Olga Award, an honor for individuals who have achieved success often in the face of adversity. One award winner was Albert Lee Yultsky, founder of Flight Safety International. At just 16 years old, Yultsky opened a hamburger stand called Little Hawk and used the profits to fund his flying lessons. His passion for flying then inspired him to teach others how to fly. Yultsky eventually created the world's premium commercial pilot training school using flight simulators to teach routine patterns and emergency drills. Since 1996, flight safety has been part of Berkshire Hathaway. To encourage a self-starter mentality in employees, Berkshire Hathaway practices a hands-off, the H in Berkshire management approach. Most businesses are often organized bureaucratically, mired in committees and meetings, with multiple layers of reporting to make sure every message and decision is controlled. In contrast, Berkshire Hathaway's management approach values decentralization and autonomy. Every subsidiary stands on its own, and only the most mission-critical decisions are made at headquarters. Interestingly, 
Berkshire Hathaway subsidiaries employ more than 300,000 people, while Berkshire headquarters claims only two dozen employees. Some Berkshire subsidiaries also practice the 90-10 rule, in which junior managers make 90% of the decisions, while senior managers collaborate on the rest. In particular, for issues which involved unusual risk, require special skills, or go beyond the expertise of junior managers. This hands-off style is exactly what makes Berkshire Hathaway attractive to self-starters. Executives appreciate that they can continue running their businesses independently, yet feel secure in the partnership with Berkshire Hathaway at the same time. Summary Part 5. Stay savvy and keep it simple. Berkshire benefits too from its subsidiaries' acquisition strengths. Over some 50 years, Berkshire Hathaway has acquired dozens of companies and the value of each has increased over time. How has the firm managed to do this? Because a company's subsidiaries do a lot of acquiring and are successful at it too. They have investor savvy and eye in Berkshire. This means the subsidiaries keep an eye out for companies with an organizational culture that fits their own, which enables them to attract a target company without even having to make the highest bid. Moreover, many Berkshire subsidiaries replicate the firm's approach to acquisitions by attracting companies that also stress core values such as trust and partnership. Chemical company and Berkshire subsidiary Lubrizol has made a number of smaller acquisitions, many of which have gained it not only talented scientists and business managers who fit well with its ethical, research-driven culture, but also increased research and development capabilities. You may have noticed that subsidiaries are also of a particular nature. We've seen so far that Berkshire Hathaway's companies engage in business in fields of energy, transport, chemicals, insurance and or furniture just as a few examples. In sum, the firm's acquisition criteria states a preference for businesses that are easy to understand, that is, businesses that are, at their essence, rudimentary, the are in Berkshire. The logic is that such businesses have been around for a long time and are thus well understood. What's more, such businesses are expected to be around for many years to come, which jimes with the firm's preference for permanence and long-term value. Such rudimentary businesses usually pose less risk than do new or seemingly exotic industries. At Berkshire Hathaway, it's more important to keep things simple and not lose money, rather than to make money by taking big risks. Repeat, it's more important to keep things simple and not lose money, rather than to make money by taking big risks. Summary Part 6 Berkshire has always planned with the long term in mind, but there are challenges ahead. It's the question on everyone's mind, what happens to Berkshire when Warren Buffett passes away? Many people fear that losing Buffett could mean the end of Berkshire Hathaway, but keeping in mind the company's core value of internality, the E in Berkshire. Buffett has developed his company's culture and practices in a way that will see Berkshire Hathaway endure long after he is gone. Since 1993, Buffett has written a number of articles about what Berkshire should be without him, and he is also formalized with a board of succession plan, which prescribes splitting Buffett's job into two separate roles, management and investment. Berkshire Hathaway has since recruited investment managers Todd Combs and Ted Westler, two men who pose the necessary skills to handle the investment line of Buffett's job and have even surpassed Buffett's investment performance in recent years. Buffett has ensured that his company has solid candidates for future managers waiting in the wings as well. The most important trait for a successor as manager and chief executive officer is a commitment to Berkshire Hathaway's culture. Thus, as a succession plan outlines, the best candidates are insiders or those who employees who now manage Berkshire subsidiaries. The strongest candidate is Frank Tack, Chief Executive Officer at the Marmon Group since 2006. Tack has over 40 years of business experience, yet there's no question that Buffett's successors, whoever they may be, will certainly face challenges. An upheaval in the firm's subsidiaries is a definite possibility. Buffett's successors will have to vet managers carefully to avoid tense relations and ensure that only the most outstanding managers are selected, while a long tenure of executives is also maintained. Another challenge is to carry on Buffett's unique approach to acquisitions. Typically, 
Accountants and lawyers examine a takeover target over weeks or months. In contrast, Buffett sizes people up often in less than a minute, and a deal is reached without delay, sometimes as part of the first phone call. Of course, not everyone can do business this way. Buffett's successors will have to find their own approach to acquisitions that fit their personal skills best. I just want to pause this summary really quickly to take a moment to say thank you for watching and listening to the summary. We have currently uploaded more than 700 free video, audio, and written book summaries at Best Book Bits. We'd love for you to become a fan of us at bestbookbits.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our following 700 videos. Also, follow us on Spotify. Click the follow button and you can check out our 700 episodes we've uploaded previously. And if you want to also help keep Best Book Bits financially alive and keep these summaries going, check out our products and services out in the links and show notes below. If they're a fit for you, such as physical books, downloadable PDFs, subscribing to our email newsletter, consuming our courses, or even joining our Inner Circle coaching program. Thanks again for being a fan, and on with the summary. Summary Part 7. Berkshire can find a valuable succession lesson in the experience of Marmon Group. In the mid-1990s, financial analyst mulled over the question whether holdings company Marmon Group would fall apart after its founder, J. and Robert Pritzker, passed away. Today, the financial community is confronting a similar question as it attempts to divine the fate of Berkshire Hathaway, considering that Warren Buffett in 2015 will turn 85 years old. It's now 2021, and he is 91 years old, still kicking. The similarities between the Marmon Group and Berkshire Hathaway are many, both, have pursued a variety of diverse businesses of acquisition targets, both have sought out rudimentary businesses and follow on the whole a decentralized management style. And both Marmon Group and Berkshire Hathaway were founded and developed by powerful men who left an incredible mark on their respected companies. Critics who believed that the Marmon Group would collapse after the Priskers were proven wrong. The firm continued to thrive, acquiring more than 100 companies, and in 2008, the Marmon Group became a Berkshire subsidiary, fitting right in because of shared core values. Frank Tack, Marmon Group director since 2003, is now the chief executive officer. The company continues to operate much as it did decades before, when Jay and Robert Prisca were still in charge. Though few things are certain, we can learn much from the Marmon Group case when Berkshire Hathaway holds true to its core values, like Marmon Group did, it will be able to live on and continue to prosper even after Buffett is gone. In review, Berkshire Beyond Buffett book summary. The key message in this book, budget consciousness, earnestness, and kinship are some of the key characteristics that give strength to business endeavors at Berkshire Hathaway, a multi-billion dollar conglomerate led by self-starters and driven by a hands-off management philosophy. By maintaining a strong reputation in many industries, encouraging savvy investing, and preferring rudimentary businesses, Berkshire Hathaway founder Warren Buffett has built a legacy that will continue to prosper even when he's gone. Actionable advice. Build core values with your own company name. Berkshire Hathaway showed that one way to create a set of core values that your employees can remember and live by is to build them into your company's name. Berkshire, for example, took each letter and assigned it a value, such as budget consciousness for B, and earnestness for E. Try it yourself. In doing so, you might just discover some principles with which your company can thrive. And that's wrapping the book summary of Berkshire Beyond Buffett. If you like this summary and want to download the PDF version, click the link below to access this. And if you want to become a contributor to Best Book Bits and become part of the community, help read books, create summaries, and do audio recordings and be featured on this channel, email me at info at bestbookbits.com or DM me on Instagram at bestbookbits. You can also join our free book club at Facebook at Best Book Bits. And if you want me to do a book summary, comment, DM me, or email me. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this. Go out there. Have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye now.